Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan, marhaban. Welcome to my channel. My name is Liyakar Zaman. Check out my channel, Roots of Knowledge, and share the content with your friends, your family. And let's continue with this series, which is known as the 40 Hadith of Mullah Ali Qadi. Now, if you're not familiar with the other series that I did of Mullah Ali Qadi about the Quran, please check that out as well. I did that um, last year in Ramadan, and this year in Ramadan, I'm actually covering this text. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Al-harbu khud'ah, war is deception. From Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, war is deception agreed upon. So this is a hadith, and this hadith, again, is a very interesting hadith. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a person who was familiar with all different types of aspects of life. So... This is to do with the topic of war. So war was something you know, the Sahaba were very familiar with. The Arabs were very familiar with war. However, war, warfare techniques, this is something which was something the Prophet wasallam taught the Sahaba. And in fact, <clears throat> many of the Sahaba, he would ask them about various techniques. And this is because in the world at that time, so if you imagine the world at that time, those countries that were military strong were considered to be those countries that were the strongest countries. So generally this area and also this area, the people, so you got the Byzantines and you got the Persians which are in this area, these were considered the two superpowers of the world and they had the cutting edge technology of warfare so these people were very very well skilled and had a long history of wars so the romans over here and the persians over here so the arabs were not very familiar with the advanced techniques of war and the arabs techniques of war were very very basic with the most basic sort of weapons that they had which was like the sword that's my version of a sword and maybe uh, spears and maybe bows and arrows okay which the others had as well but these were very these the arabs had very basic types of weapons now war is not always is not always won by by the number of people that you have war on many occasions it's won by the strategy so you have to have a strategy to be able to win the war so the Prophet Sallallahu from amongst the strategies, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked the companions. And as we know, uh, one of the greatest first battles that ever took place was the Battle of Badr. So this Battle of Badr was the battle that took place in roughly the second year of Hijrah. And then you had roughly in the fourth year of Hijrah, you had the Battle of Uhud. And then roughly in the fifth year of Hijrah, you had the Battle of uh, Khandaq or Ahzab and then later on in the, uh, in the ninth year you had the battle of um, or the tenth year you had the battle of the uh, with, with, the, with the Romans Mu'ta or so you had the battle of Tabuk roughly in the ninth year tenth year uh, written Arabic there Tabuk Okay, so in these different battles, the Prophet ﷺ did not fight in the same way. There were, there were certain strategies. So, for instance, in the Battle of Badr, the Sahaba actually took over the place of Badr. Yeah, so when they found out that the enemies were coming, they took over the wells of Badr. So there were certain wells. So the Sahaba came and the Prophet ﷺ told them to take over the wells. So when the enemy came and needed water, the enemy wouldn't have any water and would be forced to come to these wells. And this was a strategy. And in the Battle of Uhud, the Prophet Sallallahu he used the, the range of Uhud and he placed men on a small hill. And on that small hill, there's about 40 to 50 men. And this passage was blocked. But unfortunately, uh, as we all know what happened in Uhud, these men came off the mountain and then Khalid ibn Walid came and he took over. So this was another strategy. And I don't want to go too much into these. And the Battle of Khandaq, interestingly, was a new technique that was used that um, 
they where they adopted trenches so they had land and then in the land they had these trenches where the sahaba would uh, be on one side and the enemy would have to come from the other side but because of these trenches they wouldn't be able to get to the sahaba so these were some techniques that he would use one of the greatest techniques that the Prophet ﷺ he used or, or he, the le lessons that he taught, which is also something which is well known across the world, is the technique of deception. Now, there have been many, many books that have been written on war, the art of war and other things, but deception is a very well-known technique. And this is in Arabic known as khud'a or khada'a. Khud'a or khada'a. Khada'a with a fatha is actually considered to be better, but khuda, which is deception, simply whenever you're fighting the enemy, then what you don't want is your enemy to know your next move. So if you're on this side and your enemy is on this side, if your enemy knows your next move, then, so if your enemy knows your move, then it's very easy for them to foil your plans, destroy your, 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 your moves. And it's very similar to a, a game of chess. So here the Prophet ﷺ would tell them two things. He allowed in battles for people to lie in battles. Yeah, he allowed them to lie in battles. And number two, he not only allowed them to lie, but also mislead. So mislead. And number three, obviously, is not to tell the enemy of their next moves. So lying was allowed in battlefields, misleading the enemy, where you, you do one thing where you make them think as though they're going to do something, that, that you're going to do something. So they plan for that, but all of a sudden you change your plans immediately and then you defeat them or not telling them at all. So these were things the Prophet ﷺ would actually do in a battle. Now, lying normally is not allowed. However, this is only because in the battlefield, it's a matter of life and death. That's where it's been permitted. And misleading is also generally not allowed for people to mislead other people. But in battlefield, again, it's something which is necessary. And not telling someone uh, facts or the truth is also allowed in normal conditions as well. So this was an interesting hadith. Al-Harbu Khuda. The Prophet ﷺ would tell people, do not uh, tell people your plans. Mislead them in, ba in the battlefield. So, Jazakumullah Khair. What did we learn from all of this? So we learned about the importance of uh, techniques in war and strategy in war. And that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, although they didn't have the, the best of t t technology in war, they did have strategy. And this strategy can be seen in various battles. And from amongst these strategies, the Prophet sallallahu taught the companions was al-harbu khuda, that, that war is deception. War is about deceiving people, lying is permitted there, misleading is permitted there, and not telling the enemy about your future plans. Jazakumullah khair. I hope you guys benefit from this. Thank you very much to all my patrons. You guys are wonderful people. May Allah bless all of you. And also thank you very much to um, all of you guys who have been supporting my channel. Uh, if any of you guys want to help my channel as well, you can check out in the description below. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.